All right, so today we're just gonna do the start of the animal sculpture. And so we're gonna start with something called an armature. So in this sculpture here, you can see that the underside of it has newspaper in it. And we're gonna do that. Um, we do this in the classroom with the newspaper so that we don't have to use as much clay. And in this example, it's actually gonna help us make the animal with the little amount of clay that we have a little bit bigger because it won't be using up clay that we don't need, right? So it's really just a ball of newspaper. If you have some tape, you can use it. If you don't have tape, you don't really need it. And all I need, so you guys are gonna to need to find some newspaper. I really just need two sheets of newspaper for this. So I just found this, you know, mailer that comes free in the recycle bin. And I am gonna take one piece and I'm gonna crunch it up. The thing with an armature is I want it to support the weight of the clay. So I need to scrunch it really as tight as I possibly can. And this is gonna be the ball of clay that goes inside of the armature. But to, in order to keep it kind of together and compressed, after I scrunch it really tight, I'm gonna put it inside the newspaper and then I'm gonna roll it. It's like making a burrito or a, an egg roll or something. And I'm rolling it and as I'm doing it, I just keep pressing tight because I don't want to be able to push down on this. I want it to be very firm. And then, as I said, if you have a piece of tape and you want to tape this end, you can. But if you don't have a piece of tape, then you can just use the clay to hold it together. So I'm just going to take one piece of tape and now I've got that and when it's all wrapped I shouldn't be able to squish it. Like I'm squishing as hard as I can and it's, there's a lot of pressure. The other thing to keep in mind about your armature is that it, since it's newspaper it's dry, it is going to want to suck the moisture out of your clay. So you always want to keep your clay wrapped really, really tightly. Um, be careful with wet paper towels on delicate parts like the ears and things. Um, the ears, places like this, when you get to it, we're not going to get that far today, but when you have little spindly things um, sticking off the end, like maybe this hoof here, that's going to be the thing that's going to want to dry first. So when you get to the more detailed areas, you can take a tiny little piece of paper towel and almost wrap it like a cast around those little things. Um, just damp paper towel before you put it in the plastic just so that they don't dry out and you can still manipulate them. Um, but I didn't even have to do that with this one. I just gave it a spray with my spray bottle and put it in the plastic bag. But if you don't have a spray bottle, we'll get into wrapping stuff like that a little bit later. But this armature is going to want to suck the moisture out of your clay. So as soon as you add the clay to it, you gotta make sure that you're wrapping that bag super tight um, and that you're trying to get all the air out of that clay. Now, um, I most of this, if you look at my animal, and every animal is a little bit different, but sometimes, you know, the armature inside of here is gonna fit like this. If you have an, an animal that's more vertical, then you can just turn your armature to get something, I don't know, like let's say you had an owl or something like that. And you can also just like if you had a turtle or something, you could lay it flat and just cover it this way, more like that. So it's kind of an oval shape. So the first thing is you have to decide what makes sense with your animal. So I'm gonna lay mine flat so that it can fill that part. And that's the basic part of this. The appendages, like the legs, I added a little bit to the front, a little bit to the side, and I personally made the neck and the head hollow because I felt like I had enough clay. You could fill it with newspaper too, um, but it's easier, in my opinion, just to make it solid. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get our clay around it. We only have a little lump, so we don't wanna use it all. I would say you're gonna use like two thirds of the clay to cover this armature. So I'm gonna try to save, I'm gonna see if I can get it covered with this, and then I'm gonna save this part for later. So I'm just gonna do coils, but these are not like Maria Martinez perfect coils. These are very loose, just kind of squeezed out coils because they're all gonna get smushed together in the end anyway. And then you'll notice there's not gonna be any clay on the bottom, so I don't have to cover the bottom with clay. I'm just gonna begin by wrapping my coils 
around this way. And it doesn't matter how perfect they are, I'm just trying to cover that paper. So I can do them any which way I need to. I need to take just a little bit more and have quite enough. And I'm going to show you ways that you can like steal clay from your actual sculpture if you start running out of clay. I found myself when I needed more clay like I could actually thin out these edges and scoop some from here. Um, I could have dug a little out from underneath his legs. There's a way to kind of like get more clay if you need to because one of the things you're going to hear me say is that sculpture is both additive and reductive, meaning you add stuff on sometimes and sometimes you have to carve away. So this is the body of my deer. So today we're gonna to focus on just making what is called a gesture sculpture. So gesture just means I'm not gonna have any of these fine details with the hooves and the, all the tail and I'm probably not even gonna put the ears on today because it's gonna take, you know, it's gonna to wanna to dry out on me, but I want it to kind of, kind of feel like the deer. It might look like a dog or a dinosaur or something else today, and that's okay too. We're gonna refine later. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta loop. I gotta get rid of all of this coil work and just make it a solid piece. You can use your tools, you can use your fingers, you can do whatever you wanna do. If I was working with a piece that was vertical, the bottom here would be open and I would be working on it this way. And then I want to get the basic, basic appendages. So I want to add on this part, which is going to be the legs, and I want to add the neck and the face on today. So the first thing I'm going to do is the front legs, I think. Now I know that it has two front legs, but I'm going to add it on as one solid block. You can see underneath it's just one solid piece. I just kind of carved away to make it look like it's two. So I almost am just gonna take a rectangle. Maybe that's too much, I think it's too much. Add it to the side here, and then I'm gonna loop that in. Now one of the things when you're doing sculpture and that students forget a lot, is they wanna remember to loot the bottom. So every time I add something, I check all sides because if you don't loot the bottom and all the way around, then it's gonna to wanna to snap off on you. So I'm gonna loot the whole thing. And then I'm going to add a little bit of clay where I want this front leg to go. And again, I'm going to look at that bottom and I'm going to make sure that I loot that too. Even though it looks like it has all these different parts to it. Things have been carved away and manipulated so that they look like that. I'm just trying to get the basic structure there. And now I'm going to add some on where I want this um, hip and leg to go here. And I actually, for the hip here, and when things have hips, I'm going to end up carving some away. So I might just start by real quickly marking in like, all right, I think my shoulder blade is gonna go here, and I think my hip bone is gonna go there. So maybe really all I need to add on is just this little L-shaped piece right there. that. It is going to look rough and ugly right now. It is a gesture. Students have this tendency, they want it to like build it perfectly as they go. And another thing I see students do um, is they're like, they build every single part of it separately and then they try to stick it together rather than building it as a whole piece. And then everything just doesn't blend together rightly. It looks right, rightly, right. And it looks kind of robotic. So gesture is a term that we use when we do drawing. You can look up, Google it, gesture drawing, and you will see it as just a very loose, scribbly um, rendering just to get the pose of the animal. So it doesn't 
doesn't look like that yet. Not yet. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the neck and the head. And I'm going to do it solid. I think it's easier. If you wanted to, you could make a hole right here and build a little tube of newspaper and wrap coils around it. I have enough clay. If you have extra clay um, from your other projects, put it all together. You can use it all for this one. It's your bonus. It's your reward for having extra. This is the last one this quarter we're going to do with this clay. We're going to spend some time doing some painting. Um, and then at the end, if, if, if time allows, we're going to do one last thing. And that's just for quarter one. That's the way we're going to do it. And then I'm going to take this part and attach it here. Another thing you're going to notice as I sculpt is that I'm not particularly gentle. And I always joke about it in class that I'm not, it's not a real animal, you know, it's clay. So it's, it's not, I'm not abusing the animal. No animals will be harmed in the process of making this sculpture. And you know, I have my sculpture to look at and I'm redoing it, which helps. You guys have your pictures, so you gotta remember that you're kind of looking at all the different sides of the picture, which is why multiple views is gonna be helpful. So I'm kind of looking at that and how that matches up, making sure I looted the bottom, and I've got all that. Now so this is this is what students ask me sometimes. They're like, well, Miss Felix, you know? Like I made this gesture sculpture. It looks like almost nothing yet. But you know, the problem is I really want the deer's head to be to be turned. I it looks like it's looking straight ahead and I want it to be it's like leaning. I want it to be up straighter. What do I do? Alright, well here's what you do. This plastic clay. Ready? Go like this. Alright. Alright. Look. Now now it's up straighter and it's looking the other way. I can move it however I want it because it's soft. That's why you want to keep it plastic. You may have to, if it gets torn, fix and re -lube. But that is it. I want you to have that much done in step one so that it roughly, roughly looks like your animal and you've got all appendages except for the small ones like I didn't do the tail and I didn't do the ears but I have the body the legs and the head and neck all attached, okay? That is what you're gonna do for part one.